You're listening to Pitch Talks, bringing you the game. Welcome to the Pitch Talks podcast with your host Sam and myself, Mitch. Today on Pitch Talks, we are joined by Kieran Cleves, a professional photographer who has covered a range of sporting events for PA images and pro sports images. Today, we'll be learning about where his journey started and that all-important career advice for those looking to get into a similar position. So let's get to it. Welcome to Pitch Talks, bringing you the game. Welcome, Kieran. Welcome to Pitch Talks. Thank you for coming on our podcast. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Yourselves? Yeah, very well, thank you. Kieran, I think the best way to kick things off would be understanding where your passion for sport started. Was it from an early age or was it something you just naturally got into growing up? Uh, no, I'd say I've always had a passion for sport, which started from an early age, uh, pretty much from my dad taking me to football games since I was, you know, in a baby grow, really. Um, been a big Brighton and Hove Albion supporter. Uh, had a season ticket all my life, uh, even though I don't get to go very often now. Well, not not a lot of people get to go now, unfortunately. But yeah, the sports side of things, that, that was always there. Um, boxing as well and uh, golf various sports I've always been interested in just go then sort of moving on to your sort of passion for photography that you you now found you find yourself in is that also something that you always enjoyed growing up or is that sort of something that as your career has developed that you felt has been a natural fit for, for who you are as a person at a younger age I mean I, I always liked taking photos but I never really looked at it as a career option it was always something I enjoyed doing but my experiences throughout my sort of professional career since leaving university it's kind of led me down that route whether that was doing other things and realizing that that isn't what I enjoyed or doing the photography and actually really enjoying it um, but yeah that's what's got me up to this point now. So you mentioned about the route into the career that you are. So let's start from the very beginning then. A lot of your experience to begin with was dedicated towards becoming a sports journalist. So you carried out a few roles with Give Me Sport, the Brighton Journal, uh, to more of a freelance writer role for Goal.com, and plus also getting a degree in sports journalism. What was it about journalism that just really got you interested and started, started that career for you? To be honest, when I left school, it was um, I went to college, and to be honest, it was just finding the things that I had a feeling I was best at doing, and combining them together. So at college, I did English language, sport, and media studies, and then I did a level two football coaching course as well. And all, when you combine all four of those things, it kind of leads you down that route of sports journalism. And I knew I wanted to go to university. But again, it was never a thing. I, did. I never knew exactly what I wanted to study. But like I said, I just I just sort of put the things together and thought, well, that's sort of obviously the best route for me. So I did that, went down that path, got my degree at Southampton Solent University. And again, you know, you, you come out of university and you've got a bit of paper in your hand, but if you haven't got much experience out there in the industry, then it's tough knowing where to turn once you get out of university. So then it really was, it was just a case of, you know, well, what do I do next? And, and that's what led me down all those different routes of doing a bit of work experience here and there. And um, that's what eventually helped me get into my role at Brighton and Hove Albion. You're listening to Pitch Talks, bringing you the game. As you just mentioned, you did a couple of pieces of work experience, the free li- freelance writing position. And like you've just mentioned, you then started a role as a multimedia producer and photographer at Brighton & Hove uh, Football Club. In that role, what did a typical day look like for you? And was this kind of where the passion for photography kind of then came in? Photography, when I came in at Brighton, it, it wasn't really part of my, my, my job role. Uh, I came in more uh, writing for the website, writing for the program, interviewing football players. I even did, I designed like two of our websites pretty much. And, and, and as that experience went on, we had a club photographer called Paul Hazelwood and, you know, he was on his own and it's a very busy job. You've got a lot of uh, things to do. Uh, and I saw him at times, you know, he had probably had too much on his plate and I, you know, I, I was interested and I wanted to sort of try and help out. Um, so that was when I first really started picking up at actually professional camera equipment. 
and that included you know just going out and helping out with uh, taking photos of training sessions um taking photos of the under 18s under 23s and sort of working up from there helping out where i could but in terms of the other side of the job um literally like no no day was the same to be honest some days you could you know you could be sitting around really scraping around to to find stories to update the website with Whereas other days you can just have a ridiculous amount, especially throughout transfer windows, for example, sitting there at the training ground till 1 at 1 a.m. in the morning. You've been there all day since 7 a.m. Yeah, it's just you're just waiting for things to unfold, really. So that, that, that was an exciting part of the job, really, the transfer uh, deadline day. So that was fun. I just want to touch on the fact that you were able to work for your boyhood club, Brighton and Hove Albion. How was that? working for the club that you supported as, as, as a kid growing up? Oh, it was crazy. It kind of, it's something that kind of changed throughout the time I was there. I, I enjoyed every moment, to be honest. I, I absolutely loved being there. Um, and like I said, uh, you know, when I first got involved, the, the first game of that season in 2016-17, I was sitting in the stand with my dad watching the game um, as in my season ticket seat. And then the last game of the season, you know, I was there working for the club and, you know, I, I was flying all over the country like on the on the, on the the plane with the team. So, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there in my seat at the Amex one, one week and then a few weeks later, I'm sitting there on a plane, like sitting in front of Glenn Murray, for example, uh, which, you know, now because I've worked in the industry a long time, those sort of things... I don't really, it does. It just doesn't phase me. But at the time, you know, I had to pinch myself a little bit and think, and how, the, how did I end up in this position? Um, but, you know, it really was through hard work. Just to follow on from that quickly, obviously you started when Brighton were in the championship and then obviously they got promoted that season. Firstly, how was that ride of sort of being involved in the club as uh, sort of a member of staff, but also having that, you know, want for them to, to succeed even more so than probably the average member of staff as a supporter? And then how did it change going into the Premier League? It was an emotional, that was an emotional journey that season. It was, it was brilliant. Like, like I said, from being, being a fan, it was just amazing. You know, I didn't, I went, didn't miss a game, went to every game home and away. Um, that day that we sort of clinched promotion uh, against Wigan at, at the Amex, you know, the scenes were just unbelievable. And obviously, you know, it was a long time coming for the for the club, but you know, it's just like I said that evening. I ended up out in Brighton in a in a in a in a club with the, all the staff, all the all the players, uh, chairman, everyone, open bar. Um, it was just yeah, it, <laughs> it was amazing experience. But work wise, it was just it was enjoyable as well because you know, I was I was there telling the story on social media and writing match reports for these games that were just meant so much to the club. This is Pitch Talks. Since leaving Brighton, you've created your own brand and portfolio, Kieran Cleves Photography. So for those who want to check it out, I highly recommend you do. And you've covered a range of events and had your photos published in newspapers, as I mentioned at the start. But in terms of the sport that you've managed to capture and been for, been there for what's been the standout moments that you've photographed well to be honest you know I'm, I'm just relatively early into my sort of photography career so for me personally what it, it, it one of the standout moments was you know while I was still working at Brighton to be honest my first ever professional football game that I photographed was against uh, Tottenham Hotspur at Wembley Stadium um, which to be honest you know for a lot of photographers you know, you, you start at the very bottom. You start, you know, Sunday league and non-league football. Um, whereas, obviously, i had done a few sort of under-18 games at the training ground and things like that. But to come in and do my first professional game at, you know, Wembley Stadium, it was just incredible. Um, so that's a massive highlight for me. Um, but, you know, as well, when I, when I decided to leave Brighton, which was a hard decision, um, but I wanted to do it because I really wanted to focus on photography. I actually briefly went to, I started a master's course in Nottingham um, to, in photography, which for me, after about three, four weeks, I just knew it wasn't for me, uh, wasn't feeling it at all. But, you know, sometimes you've got to realise those things to, to know what you've got to do next. So then I started up 
doing some games for Pro Sports Images, uh, which is a, a Sussex-based agency. Um, and my first ever game for them was uh, Walsall against Darlington in the FA Cup, which was in November, I think. And then, you know, within the space of two, three months, I've, I'm then taking photos of Chelsea versus Bayern Munich in the Champions League. So that was quite, you know, doing games like that was special. But again, I, I could only get to the point where I was covering those matches because of all the hard work I'd put in and all the other games that I'd covered before that. So when you're asked to work on a football match, let's say a Premier League game, a Champions League game, what does the typical day look like for you? To be honest, me personally, um, I always like to get there pretty early. You know, a lot, a lot of people maybe further into their careers you know they, they might turn up close to the kickoff but being at the stage I am in my career I'm very keen and I always want to sort of give myself the best chance of taking creative photos and you know telling the story of the whole day um, so I, I usually try and get there about three hours before kickoff and that, that also allows me to work at a nice pace um, you know I'm not rushing around you know so I'd get there I'd, I'd park up sort of roam around the stadium for a little bit before the game, see if, you know, anything's going on. Sometimes they're the best photos you can take, you know, in the lead up to a game. And then obviously you've got team arrival, you might get a few pictures of them arriving. Going, you know, a lot has changed now, obviously, because of uh, COVID. But, you know, you, you go in and simple in terms of knowing that you, you're wanting to take pictures of the action when the match starts. But for me personally, it's what it's, it's thinking around that and it's thinking, OK, well, you know, a lot of people are going to get those photos of the game. But, you know, how else can I tell the story from my perspective that, and create a selection of images that perhaps looks different to what the person next to me has got? Just to sort of touch on what you just mentioned there about sort of trying to differentiate yourself, when you do sort of end up sort of getting setting up and getting a position, is it a free-for-all for positions or is there any sort of hierarchy as to who gets to choose what or is it first come first served or or how does that work with your your sort of other i say colleagues but but probably as, as much as competitors sort of thing uh, well before the pandemic began you, if you went to somewhere like chelsea for example you you know you could have 40 40 50 photographers there for example and and you are literally uh, you're pretty much as a free-for-all you you go and find your pick your spot and that's your spot for the game and you don't really move from that position whereas when the pandemic kicked off, obviously the games started coming back in again. You know, you would be, so, so for example, I was at Bournemouth last Saturday and you're assigned a position and you have to stay in that position. Um, it varies depending on what ground you go to. Some some stadiums are a little bit more lenient in terms of, you know, you can, you can go up into the stand and take some photos from the stand and you can move around a little bit. Obviously, you've got to maintain social distancing at the moment, but as long as you're not sort of, you know, rubbing shoulders with each other, then it's okay. But for example, at the moment, Bournemouth, you do literally, you get given your spot and you have to stay in that spot. So, which you can understand. This is Pitch Talks. From a professional photographer's standpoint, do you have a favourite ground? Oh, I've been asked that before and it is, it is a tough one, to be honest. <laughs> for, me, for me, obviously, I love, I love taking photos at Brighton. That was great because um, it's my club. But... To be honest, a lot of a lot of people say, you know, all the big the bigger grounds that you know they do have nicer backgrounds because you know you've got it's a much bigger stadium and the stands provide a nice red background or blue background or whatever. Um, but for me personally, I, I I love the variation of going to lots of different grounds, all the sort of you know League Two maybe League One. Um, I, I wouldn't want to go to the same stadium every single week for the rest of my life, to be honest, because it would it would get quite boring. But, you, you know, you don't have to be in the nicest stadium in England to take the nicest photos. You, you can you can take them at a non-league game. You can take them down the park on a Sunday. So, personally, yeah, I, I don't really have a favourite stadium. I, I honestly don't. <laughs> You're listening to Pitch Talks. Bringing you the game. Today we are talking with Kieran Cleves on his career from graduating from university with a degree in sports journalism and now creating his own brand and portfolio, capturing some of the most elite sporting events. But what would be great now, Kieran, is to learn a little bit more about how you develop as a photographer throughout your career. Sam? Yeah, so on your website, in your 
my background section, you highlight how the, the current pandemic has allowed you to broaden your scope outside of the world, world of sport, being, being able to get involved in other industries. How has that impacted you? And is there anything that you've learned from the world of outside of sport that you might take and, and use within the sporting world? Personally, I've really enjoyed this sort of period of time, photography-wise, purely because, you know, I did sort of see myself as just a sports photographer back at the start of the year. Um, and obviously, when it got to March and all the sport stopped, it was kind of like, okay, well, what do I do now? So in, in, instead of, you know, sitting there and just letting this get the better of me, I thought, okay, well, I want to carry on taking photos. And it's not just what I'm interested in. So how can I sort of adapt and do something a little bit different so I did I start. I started back in March really I, you know when when we were in our first lockdown and I, I was on, on my daily walk each day I was taking my camera with me and I was roaming around where I live and uh, just trying to sort of tell the story of what was happening because it's such a strange time for everyone and each day I would take a different route um, you know because you don't want to take the same route every day because you're probably going to see the same things and then, you know, as time went on over the summer months, um, lots of things, you know, happened. You had all the Black Lives Matter protests and those sort of news events uh, were just brilliant to sort of document. And, you know, I just saw that as an opportunity for me to to go and, one, improve my photography and, you know, get to know the camera better, get to know certain techniques uh, and just try and, you know, get my name out there more and, show that I'm, you know, I'm not just a one trick pony that can only do one thing. So for me, yeah, I really enjoyed uh, doing that. And it definitely has helped me because you can take, you know, even if it's just learning how to use light, for example, um, you know, light in a subject or using shadows or all different types of things. You, you don't, you can't, you don't just do that on a football pitch or in a boxing ring or you can do that anywhere. Um, and then once you've done that and you've perfected that and you haven't got as much pressure on you, you then can take that into the sporting side of things and you can start experimenting there. And that's what I've tried to do. As you mentioned earlier, you haven't been doing photography for too long. But from what you have done and what you've experienced, what do you love most about being a photographer? I think that comes from just the, the passion that I've realised that I have for it. That, you know, like I said, that, that hasn't always been there. That's just something that's really developed and, you know, it's kind of hit me in the face one day and made me realise, oh, no, I really do enjoy doing this. And it's like, you know, you, you, I'm out now and I might be out for a walk somewhere and I see something and I look at it and straight away I think, oh, why well, have I not got, cam not got my camera with me? And it is that sort of, is that little bit of passion that you have for it that, that really does develop uh, and that's, what, that's why you enjoy it so much. And then when you can combine that with something else you love, which is obviously sport, um, then, you know, that, 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 that's why I love it so much because you, you're going and you're hopefully getting into some big sporting events, which, you know, I, I plan to further down the line. You know, at, at this December just gone, I, I photographed the World Darts Championships at the Ali Pali in London, which was an amazing experience. But it's those sort of things, you know, you want to be there and, and then, if you can also take photos of it and, and you absolutely love doing that at the same time, then, you know, can't complain really. Do you have any goals for the future in terms of sporting events that you'd love to be there and working professionally? Football wise, like going, going to like a world cup, that was just, that would be unbelievable, you know, going abroad somewhere and covering a whole tournament, you know, that, that, that would be a dream. But other sports as well, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of boxing. Uh, I did my first boxing fight back in February. I uh, photographed Kel Brook against Mark DeLuca. And, and that, well, that was really good. But, you know, you, you see these massive fights that happen in New York at Madison Square Gardens and, you know, the MGM in Las Vegas. And, you know, to, to, to be at one of those events would just be amazing. Uh, and, then, and then, to be honest... You know, covering something like the Masters in golf or, you know, covering a Super Bowl, American football, you know, there's, there's so many. And uh, like I said, I, I wouldn't want to limit myself to one sport. I, I, there's so many different sports out there that I'd love to um, photograph. Absolutely. And I completely agree with you on, on the Augusta Masters. The amount of shots you'd have there would be, <laughs> you'd have to take a few, uh, a few memory cards, I'm sure. <laughs> so our final question then, what advice 
could you give to someone looking to, you know, pursue a career as a photographer or anything that you picked up from being a sports journalist or anything that you've just picked up and you'd offer someone just getting into the sports industry? To be honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of give advice from just a photographic point of view, just, just in general, trying to break into like this industry. Um, I mean, I've obviously done it in two ways. Um, you know, and I'm still, I'm still doing it now. I'm still trying very hard now to, to keep, to keep moving forward and make a career out of this. Um, but for me personally, it's just don't be scared to reach out to people. You know, no one's going to come and knock on your door and ask you if you want to have this opportunity. You know, you have to find those opportunities yourself, but you've got to be clever about who you who you ask and, you know, what, how you ask them. For me, again, I always look at it, there's, there's three Ps. Passion, uh, which you've got to have the passion for it. Otherwise, you, you know, you're not going to put in that extra 10% that's going to make you stand out from other people. Uh, and if you haven't got the passion, you're really not going to want to jump off the sofa and, you know, drive an hour down the road for a, a chat with someone that might lead to another opportunity, for example. Second one, you know, you've got to be patient because, you know, these things aren't going to happen overnight. Um, you've just got to keep believing in yourself and keep pursuing, you know, your dreams and, and what you want. And you've got to be persistent because, you know, you, you can ask a question 10 times and, and someone might not give you the answer you want. But if you ask it that one more time, you never know. You, you really don't know. You, you've got to keep knocking on people's doors and you've just got to sort of, you know, you've got to make yourself be known. You've got to, people out there might not know who you are now, but if you keep shouting and you keep making enough noise and keep sort of making it so they can't ignore you, then, you know, eventually, hopefully they'll recognise who you are and that might be the first step that you take on your way to, you know, being a sports journalist or a photographer. Kieran, it's been great having you on Pitch Talks today. It's been awesome hearing about some of your experiences and um, I wish you all the luck uh, for the future and hopefully one day we'll see on your website and your uh, social channels that you finally made it to Augusta. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a picture if I do. Perfect. So yeah, once again, thank you so much for joining us on Pitch Talks today. No problem. Thanks for having me, guys. And that concludes another episode of Pitch Talks, learning all about the life of Kieran Cleves in his career that started off as a sports journalist, but then now going into sports photography and the opportunities that it's led him to work at. And of course, the final career advice on how to get into the sports industry with the three Ps. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Bringing You the Game by Pitch Talks. For more information on our latest episodes, careers advice, or to even get involved as a guest, get in touch with the team at mitch at pitch-talks.com or send us a message on any of our social platforms. Thanks for tuning in. Bringing You the Game. Bringing you the game. Pitch Talks. All Pitch Talks content is copyright protected. Pitch Talks.